Are binaries a good or a bad thing? I'll answer that question in this episode by telling you about the difference between Western logic and non-Western dialecticism. There are some big ideas in this episode and some big words. And if you don't get your head around them, don't worry. You don't need the material from this video for the assessments. This video gives you a very broad context around some of those ideas we've covered around concepts of self and cultural domains that goes beyond our assessments. And because it's a very broad context, it's pretty philosophical. Now that's not a bad place to go because a long time ago, psychology came from philosophy. But these days we tend not to dip into philosophy much, which is why some of the stuff in this video might feel extra challenging. So as we've covered in episodes seven and eight, mainstream psychology is built on an individual concept of the self that's cemented into a culture dominated by individualism. And that concept of self is one that's largely intolerant of ambiguity and inconsistency, a self that has to be unitary, to be healthy, separate from others. And in psychological research, you're either the subject or the object of the research. We can't tolerate you being both things at the same time, which is why introspection has been mostly rejected by psychology. Instead, we adopted the experimental method where you isolate some variables of interest, construct your experimental and null hypothesis around them, and then devise an experiment to test which hypothesis is true. And that concept of self, as well as the broader mainstream approach to science, is part of a particular knowledge system called Western logic. And a knowledge system, that's just um, a collection of ways of understanding, ways of thinking and ways of exploring the world that operate within a particular culture. And once you understand how the knowledge system known as Western logic operates, you'll understand how we think about things in the way we do. So what is Western logic? Western logic is a very dominant knowledge system that you find in countries like Australia, and places like Western Europe and North America. It started mostly in ancient Greece, around the 4th to 5th century BC. It operates on the idea that knowledge comes from the weighing up of one argument against its logical opposite argument. It refers to these as thesis and antithesis. And knowledge is produced through synthesis, which is where you accept one of them as true. And this logic is premised on the notion that two contradictory things can't both be true, which creates a tension that needs to be resolved. So in an experiment, you have your experimental hypothesis and its opposite or contradiction, the null hypothesis. And you design your experiment to show which of them is true. It's about reconciling or resolving the contradiction. And if you can't resolve the contradiction, then you have no knowledge you only have ignorance. And it's through this logic that binaries are constructed. Thesis and antithesis are binaries. They're opposites. They're in contradiction. And this logic, in the quest for knowledge, turns everything it can into binaries. And those binaries are projected out into the world where they become social categories, which are then moralized. So rather than deciding which of the binary pair is true, which is false, we decide which is good and which is bad. And that's the process that leads to social exclusion and discrimination. When people are placed in a binary, they become seen as bad. And that's what's happened to gender, the construction of male-female binary, which was resolved by males being determined to be good and females to be bad. The Adam and Eve story in the Bible for example. Same with ethnicity. White, good. Black, bad. Disability. Non-disabled. It's good. 
disabled, bad. Sane, good, mad, bad. And it's that moralisation of those constructed binaries that is what global social movements have largely been fighting against. Though typically those movements don't challenge the binaries, they just challenge their moralisation. Now let's look at an alternative knowledge system, the non-Western dialecticism. This is a knowledge system that's more common to cultures in Asia, Africa, Central and South America, but also among First Nations peoples across the globe. And this system also sets up knowledge as being related to the contradiction between thesis and anth antithesis, but it doesn't see knowledge as only coming from the reconciliation of the contradiction between thesis and antithesis. In fact, the contradiction is often accepted and seen as a source of knowledge, not a source of ignorance. And you can see this represented in that yin yang, you know, that Chinese philosophical concept where opposites coexist in a type of harmony and where meaning comes from the interaction of those two opposing forces. And that's what we call non-Western dialecticism. It's the foundation to the philosophy of Taoism. And in societies where a non-Western dialectical system operates, you find contradictions are more likely to be accepted and adapted to rather than rejected. Things are less likely to operate in that binary of true or false, right or wrong, good or bad. You're less likely to find things separated out as object and subject. Binaries are broken down, the two sides of a thing are seen as interdependent, and the boundaries between them are more porous, and one thing can turn into another. And you can see this in how First Nations people think of the connection between people and land. They're not separate, but they're deeply interconnected. It's what is being captured in that formula from Kurt Levine. Remember that? Uh, I talked about it before where human behaviour is a function of the interaction between the person and their environment. And this impacts how we perceive the self and other. People are interconnected in a complex entanglement. And it's that entanglement that gives meaning to people's lives. It's the social self that makes sense in a non-Western dialectical knowledge system. Under Western logic, the world's presented to us as neat, self-contained, and in boxes, everything in a category. And knowledge is assured when there's nothing spilling out of any of those boxes or categories into any other box or category. You know, no contamination between those categories. So you're either a man or a woman, you're either gay or straight, you're either this or that. There are no in-betweens and no moving from one to the other. And it's a system that assumes a stability in terms of things are the way they are, and they will always be that way. And it's a system that seeks to place as many of those things as it can into binaries, as that is how knowledge is formed, into opposites where one can be determined as true and one false, and then one thing determined to be good and one thing determined to be bad. And in all of this, in that knowledge system, there's this deep-seated conservatism to knowledge. And it's that knowledge system that psychology in the West has developed from and feeds into. But there are cracks in this knowledge system. And those cracks have been opening up in recent years. In assessment one, you'll see that crack opening up in relation to mental health, the breaking down of that binary between sane and insane in David Rosenhan's paper. But those cracks are also appearing in unexpected places, such as in modern physics, specifically quantum mechanics, where a thing can be two different things at the same time. Light can be both a particle and a wave. And this is the shift from the Newtonian age of physics to the quantum age of physics. And we're right in that transition just now. But that's a bit of a rabbit hole, OK? And we're not going to go down that rabbit hole, but just letting you know that it, it's there. Um, 
And also to let you know that the dominance of the Western knowledge system is coming under challenge. All those cracks are appearing because in spite of how dominant the Western logic knowledge system is and has become, uh, and how it's been with us for a very long time, we've always had that alternative system available to us. And indeed, we often turn to that alternative system without knowing it. We turn to it when we decide that, yes, two people who disagree can both be right. And when we decide that you can't put someone into a box, you know, into a particular yeah. category, that they're more complicated than that. And when we push back on those simple binaries of good and bad and truth and lies. And that's getting back to that thing where it's not so much of a case of Western logic versus dialecticism, insofar as only one of these things can exist in a society at one time. More often we have one of those systems is dominant and the other is dormant. But occasionally that other one bubbles to the surface. And people still draw on that alternative knowledge system without knowing that's what they're doing. Think back to the episode where we talked about the Game of Thrones episodes. Um, can you see how the storytelling there up to series six was grounded in dialecticism? Characters being neither good or bad. People loved that. People loved that storytelling. It engaged them more than the traditional hero, heroes and villain stories that's more dominant in our, in our culture and more reflective of Western logic as a knowledge system. It, it gives us those stories of simple stories of hero versus villain. But we loved that alternative. It tapped into something in us and we hated it when it went back to that Western logic system of heroes and villains after series six. So let's, let's get back to my opening question about binaries. So are binaries good or bad? Well, they're both good and bad, though they probably aren't binaries. Okay, we, we went a bit deep. We, we, we dug in deep there. And if that just went over your head, no worries. It's okay. It's okay to duck out of the way of this stuff and just focus on understanding the concept of self and cultural domains and you'll be fine for assessment one. Okay, let's leave it there. Give you a bit of time to recover from this episode. So until next time, ta-da. 